You know, I love me some Blue Chew. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Blue Chew. I love this stuff. It never fails. Keep one in the uh, weird pocket. Rock hard. Lasts a while. You get like an extra half inch, which Lord knows I need. And uh, the lady loves it. She feels more attractive because I don't have to, uh, you know, watch videos beforehand and get myself worked up. Tastes good. Feels good. Can't recommend it enough. And I'll tell you, I break them in half, and I'll use it. That thing's a good 12 hours for me. Wow. I got I got to check it out. I got to get on this YouTube situation because uh, this thing is pretty amazing. It, you can talk to a licensed medical provider. This is a prescription drug here, for, for God's sakes. Yes. You get a prescription online. It ships right to your door in a discreet package, and Blue Chew makes everything right here in the USA. It's an online prescription service that you can save a ton of money compared to the name brand's all you have to do right now, we got a special offer just for you guys. Visit bluechew.com and get your first shipment free when you use special promo code Tuesdays. Just pay $5 in shipping. Again, that's B L U E chew.com, promo code Tuesdays to try it for free. Got to do it, folks. Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories! Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag! (laughs) Surf's up! And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. Yeah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Ha! Hey, hey, folks, here we are. It's Tuesday. We're Tuesdays, and, uh, yeah, we're feeling kooky. What's shaking fatty? Uh, good to be here. I, I feel the reverse of you. I was you yesterday. Oh, you're and you're little, me today. Well, you were a little uh, zoned out yesterday, a little flight happy, rode hard, put away wet. Oh, I was all fucked up, but I feel so refreshed. Refreshed right now. I, I I wish I could just send it to you. I wish I could I hear you. bend you over the table, kick your legs out, fuck you right on the ass, and give you what I have. Because Please, herpes. I well that too. But uh, I have yesterday, Sunday. We're recording Monday. Sunday, I had the five a.m. five thirty flight what? out of Des Moines. Five the flight. 5.30 a.m. flight. Hachi machi. That's a nightmare. From Des Moines to Minneapolis, Minneapolis to LaGuardia. And, Got it. And uh, it was the kind of flight where I told the lady, Leisha, the manager, she's like, what time do you need the cab? She got the phone ready to call the cab. And I'm like, I need it at like 3.45. And oh. she was like, what? She's like, I think you read that wrong. There's no, there's no planes out of this airport at that hour. And I'm like, I'm telling you, lady. Yeah. And she's like, holy shit. I didn't even know anyone flew out that early. What the hell? Ooh. So... I never. I'm scarred because remember Omaha. Yeah. They the guy didn't pick me up. Oh uh, yeah. And luckily Colleen, shout out to Colleen, one of the great club big, managers. Big call. <laughs> Love you, call. I called her and she just threw on some slippers Whoa, and came over and took me there. What a gal. Magical. And this time, so I don't trust, especially nowadays. You know, there's less Ubers. There's no yellow cabs out here. Gone like the dodo or Native Americans. Yes, exactly. Uh, how? Right? Wait, no, that's uh, terrorist. No, nah, that's the other one. There we go. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that's the cavalry, huh? The okay. cavalry. And somebody pointed out at Jacobs Field, the Cleveland Indians Stadium, it's Progressive Field, I think, now. They, uh, they'll do that. like Because, you know, baseball teams do the... Sure. But they're the Indians. Oh, yeah. Not very progressive. Doesn't make sense. Well, now I think they're not the Indians. They're going to be the Cleveland... You know, queers or whatever it is. Could you do like the Choctaw? Could you get specific? We're the Cherokees or we're the Sioux. I think some people at Florida State is the Seminoles, but they're upset about that because they do the tomahawk chop. Ah, the chop. Yes. Chop well, is bad. Bad salads. Uh, decent TV show. Nah, I never saw it. Never had the salad. Never went. Never watched the show. But uh-huh. have you seen the show? <laughs> <laughs> this is the show. Um, but anyways, the tomahawk chop is horrible. It's a whole thing. I don't know. Whatever. But I don't. I don't quite get it. But I don't want to go off in that whole uh, all right, thing. All right. You know what I mean? There's enough people talking about that. I, I don't mean, quite you understand. The, you got the fight in Irish. Why can't you? Have, 
I it's it's like we're rooting for Indian or Native Americans. Yeah, well, maybe that's it. Maybe they got to be the Cleveland Native Americans. Oh, that's a, that's too long. Yeah, nobody cares. Who cares? All right, I don't think they care. They're too busy drinking and gambling. Yeah, you fucking sons of bitches. Oh yeah. Don't, but anyway, don't so sue me. I said, um, Cherokee to success. <laughs> ah, I don't know. We'll wow, figure it out later. Where'd you pull that out of? Eddie? It wasn't good. But let me get the hoodie off. Get I feel the like hoodie that's gonna off. Get us I can hit the AC if you need there, sloppy jalopy. That's eh, not too bad. All right, I'll take it. Uh, all right. So, anyways, I got the five thirty flight. So the pickups three forty five. But I never trust these guys. So she calls them up, and it's all right. It's like midnight. I'm yeah. like, we need a three forty five. He's like, yeah, all right. And then Ooh. hangs up. So Steve and I wake up and. What do you think about this? I had a good moment, a good thought where I was like, no, let me be better than this. But so we're going to bed at like 1 a.m. because you got a late show and then you got to go home. You got to pull your pud and watch yep. real time, the whole thing. Yep, yep, yep. So we ended up going to bed at like 1 a.m. There's a wedding and the entire wedding party is on my floor. Oh, God, that's a nightmare. And I got the alarm set for 345. So I got 245 max. And it's just la- at one point I heard like a boombox or whatever oh, the kids are using. Lord have mercy! Just music up the hallway. Everyone's shouting, yelling, and I thought to myself, I was laying there with like eyes open. I'm like, I want to go out there. I want to beat the snot out of them. Should I call down to the room? Right. But I thought what I'm definitely going to do is wake up at 3:45 to get picked up. Mm. I'm going to bang on some door. I'm going to play oh, some music. Oh, a little goose for the gander. Exactly. How fun will it be to I'll throw on you know Pantera. Yeah. Vulgar display of anal or whatever it's called. Good and just, tune. Just blast it, and that—that's what I'll do. And I'll slam my door and really cough and make some noise because yes. fuck them. Yes, yes, the old flipperoo. Exactly. But so then I woke up at three forty-five. That that wake up where it's like, <laughs> oh god. And meh, 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 meh. you know what I did? I said, what am I doing? What am I? I'm gonna get revenge. Mm. Who cares? I was once like them. I was a drunk piece of shit, and they're not doing it. To me. True. They're having a nice time. They're getting drunk. They're getting crazy. What are you going to do? That's true. And you don't want to be the guy with the nightcap and the candle going, excuse me, could you keep it down? I have a flight in the morning. You know, then they just go, ah, screw you, old man, and crank it up. And they they get louder or they'll they'll, they'll pull your panties over your head or they'll, you know, rub dog shit on your door handle, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. So I thought better, but I said, no need to do that. I went downstairs, supposed to get picked up at... I think it was a 4 a.m. pickup. Whew. So we go down there. And oh, same flight as the other kid. Uh, Steve Rogers, huge cock. Saw him in the pool. I got a glance at that thing. Oh, uh, he saw an imprint? I saw It's like a microphone. It's oh, huge. Oh, man. Heavy on the end, too. Ah, uh, yes, like a megaphone. He's got a cute little body, this kid. He's a, He's got swimmer bod. He's ripped. Nice big old dong. His shirt's the size of my fucking nephew's. The, put the shirt, I know. They, it's, it's a little much. He's a little bit of a twink, that kid. I don't know if he's drying it uh, wrong or what's <laughs> going on, but his his shirt looks like a, a, a the, it looks like the shirt you put in like the bathtub and then it grows. Ah, uh, yeah, one of those yeah. things. It's one of those shirts you throw on a Barbie or a Ken. It's a Barbie shirt, but anyways, mm. sweet kid, he comes down there, and I'm trying not to be cynical, but I'm like. It's 3.58. We walk down. I'm like, as soon as the car is not there, usually the car is waiting, a professional yeah, car yeah, company. Yeah. 3.58. He's not there. I'm already freaking out. And then I wait till exactly four on the dot. Yep. Call the company. Yep. Guy answers, hey, hello, uh, lucky cab. Not so lucky for me. Mm. And I go, hey, uh, I got a 4 a.m. pickup and just want to make sure he's still coming. He goes, yeah, he overshot it a little bit. Oh, I got a sneeze. Oh. Hey. There you go. Praise <laughs> Allah. So I go, I got a 4 a.m. pickup. It's 4 a.m. Yeah. And the guy goes, he overshot it. What does that mean? Yeah, I think he missed the exit or something. Ah, it's a squirter. And he goes, oh, he's on his way, though. And I go, okay, great. I hang up. I go, he's on his way, which makes you feel a little relief. A little bit. But four minutes pass, and I go, oh, he's on his way. But that could be, he could be an hour away. Exactly. It's a little vague there, sloppy. Strike a pose. Vague, vague, vague. Uh, <laughs> vague it. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's Las stunk. Vegas. We should start over. I just stink on ice over uh, here. Oh, come on. Keep it cooking. I'm, I'm, I'm wrapped up in the tail. Well, it's a nice tail. But anyways, it's 4.05, 4.08, Ooh. 4.10. I, I call back. No answer. Then I get a text saying I can't answer my phone while with a customer. And oh. I wrote back, I wrote back, what? Because I was calling the dispatcher. Right. 
And the guy, I write, what? And the guy's like, I have a customer, can't answer the phone. But I'm like, but this is the dispatch number. Mm. And you're not supposed to have a customer. You're supposed to be picking us up. Right. Then I get a text that says, GPS says five to eight minutes. Jeez. And I'm like, what GPS gives you five to eight? GPSs yes. are dead on now. Good point. Boy, you're, you're crack squad on this. I'm like Dick Gainel. But so finally, Good porn. it says... He says he pulls in. Like, yeah, you hear the car and you can hear like this in the distance because we're at the backside of the hotel. You just hear like, like he oh, comes wow. like skidding in like the delivery man in Home Alone. Right. He comes ripping in. We jump in the cab and there's like no words. But he's like, sorry, uh, the exit was the thing and we're not, we're not really having it. Uh-huh. Shoots us to the airport. I got uh, pre-check, of course. I get right in, and I'm first class. And right as I walk up, they're like, now boarding, first class. It was kind of nice. It worked out great. But uh, made it home. But 45 minutes of sleep. So all day yesterday, I was snapping and yelling the N-word and hiling Hitler. It was a crazy day. You just feel like a different person. It's a nightmare. I totally get it. So wait a minute. Did you get a nap in? No nap. Because once I get home, I'm like, I won't nap. Because this way, I'll sleep well. Right. So I just got through the night, stayed up, watched some TV, some hockey, some golf, the tennis, the whole thing. That's true. And then uh, slept like a light, like a light bulb that's broken. Mm. And then woke up today. I feel refreshed. I feel renewed. Hallelujah. They have the sleep. There's all these studies now. No sleep will kill you. You lose 10 years of your life if you don't get a snooze in. Uh, fuck. You know, smoke all you want, drink all you want, fuck all you want, as long as you're getting a nap. Exactly. It's really bad. You could feel it. I had like a weird muscle spasm on my left side. Yeah, my yeah. Like, tooth hurt. My eyes, I was all blinky. I was snapping. Uh, you got to go into reserves because think about it. Your phone is on 2%. When it's done, it's just done. But you're on 2%. And you pretty much are out of battery, but you're still going. Yeah, you got to go. But That's I was so it glad. Takes a lot. I didn't have any spots, and I just sat and watched sports and movies all day. So it's kind of nice. This party that's kind of nice. You feel like a little fucked up. It's like your special day. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I'm special needs, but I'll tell you, my big thing is I'll do these early flights. Oh, you had a connection too. Yeah, that was That's tough. A cunt. But I'll do these early flights, and then I don't realize it, and I got two spots that night, and one of the spots is 11.41. You're like, ah, what am I doing to myself? That's rough. No, you got to be, you got to really be aware of that shit. Oh, yeah. Well, you got to, I got to tell you, was this a cab or a car service? This was a cab, sir, a cab company, Lucky okay. Cab, but we, we built, booked it ahead. You get in that cab, and you kind of go, I get why Uber is thriving. You know, because this guy's smoking a stogie. He's got the seat all the way back up on the back seat. He's playing reggae. You know, he's got the dice in the mirror and, and hitting a Coke key. And there's no um, standards. Like yes. Uber, you have to have a certain kind of car, but a cab, just whatever. Oh, yeah, it's a hoopty. Well, then we landed at LaGuardia, and it used to be just cabs everywhere. So we go over there, and there's, there's a bunch of cabs, but in the old days, I live in Astoria, which is like 10 minutes from the airport, so they used to give you a ticket, because if you wait in line as a cab driver, then your fare that you finally get is like down the street. You get a ticket back to the front of the line. Yes. But they don't do that anymore. So now the guy's been waiting. I go, hey, we got a cab, and I go, and I know they don't do the ticket system anymore, but I want him to know that I care. Uh. So I go, hey, they didn't give me a ticket, and he's like, oh, there's no ticket anymore. Right. And I was like, what? No ticket. I'm just acting. Yes. Because I know he's getting fucked or whatever. And he's like, all right. But they, but they, I get pissed because they're mad at you. Yes. But I'm like, that's where I live. You're a cab driver. Oh, You're at the airport. He wants a big fare. They want a big fare. And my fare is $12 because I'm down the street. But I'm like, I don't know what you want me to do. It's yeah. like a shitty part of the job. I think we might have had the same goddamn conversation ah. before. But it's the same as, you know, uh, whatever. It's part of the job. So... I just said, I'll, I'll give you a nice tip. He goes, well, you pay cash? They want ah, cash. And I go, the cash. I don't have cash, but I'm going to give you a crazy tip. So I, I tipped him like 10 bucks. It was like $14. I gave him 24 ah. I had Steve chip in some cash, too. So I was like, there you go. You happy with that? Yeah. But uh, And he gets to go do? right back. You know, you get another, you get another hack. Yeah, I feel, I, feel, I feel for these cab drivers. But at the same time, I mean, there's years of... How many times have you been in a cab? They drive like shit. They're doing 100. They Every don't pick time. up black people. Their yeah. car smells like shit. They yeah. yell at you. There's, so part of you is like, nah, that's how it goes. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me, let me throw this one at you because you mentioned the cash thing. In the 80s, 7-Eleven, maybe it was the 70s, 7-Eleven stores made a bid to like open up in new york city like why don't we have any 7-elevens in new york city we're the biggest uh you know convenience store of all time 
New York. And everybody said, blow me. We're going bodega. We don't need your dumb uh, right. chain bullshit. And they said, all right, all right. And they packed up. And they moved it out. 7-Eleven came back about seven, eight years ago, killed it, and now they're blowing up everywhere because the card, fatty, the card has come back. What card? Credit card. Uh, no one's got cash anymore. So now these 7-Elevens are killing it and the bodegas are dying. Yeah, it's weird because I don't. I try not to go to 7-Eleven because I care about the bodega guys. But sure. sometimes, you know, they can be ass smooches too. Oh, yeah, with the cat on the on the Goya beans and the uh, the weird smell uh, and they're out of everything. You know, it's got some empty shelving sometimes. You're like, who's buying Spam? Right, yeah. I, I still try not to go to the 7 because there's one over here. Yeah. But uh, I try not to hit it, but... Yeah, that's the way it goes. I mean, I, we, I talked about this this weekend, and we've said this before too. But it's like these corporations. You want to hate? I hate that they're taking over. I do hate that every fucking block is all corporations. Yep. But they make it easy. It's like I Nate know. had that great joke. They all they started small and they made it. They made it. And uh, you know, you just make it so the app is like Domino's. I've talked about this. Where it's like you hit three buttons. I open my phone. I cl- open Domino's. I click reorder. Confirm. Yeah, And yeah. exactly what I want is on its way. And the other place, I got to call Dino's, and it's some guy going, hey, large yeah. order. Hey, put that down. Don't put that over there. What do you want, a large pizza? Uh, okay, yes. large cheese. And I'm yes. like, what? What is it? And they get the address wrong, and you don't know what the fuck. I know. And then you go, can I pay with a card? They go, oh, here we go with the card. I'm like, it's 2021. Get a fucking swipey or a chippy or, or something. Well, not to mention, you got to read the card. You got four, nine, six, uh, eight, seven, yeah. eight, two. And, and you just hear shit in the background. So... It's tough. I mean, Chipotle, you're, you zip through. You it's zip. So, and it tastes the same in yes. every fucking state. Same size, same amount, same anal, same diarrhea, but still, it's the same product. Then you get, you always get that one New Yorker guy. You go on a subway, you know, you can get a fucking 12 pounds of, of uh, fresh cut turkey boar's head over here if you go to Sally's uh, Dickless and you go, all right, I'll go to Sally's Dickless. You walk in, they call you a homo. The guy's smoking. He's ashing into the uh, olive mix. The whole thing sucks. And they're like, it's part of the thing. And I'm like, well, this is part of this thing. Uh-huh. I like this. And the Starbucks, I got a, a nice app, and they get credits. Every four drinks is free. Good point. You go, boop, 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 boop. You save stars. The other place gives you a punch card, but the punch card falls out of my wallet. It's torn. It's ripped. And by the time you come back, they're like, oh, well, we don't do the punch we card don't do anymore. The punch card. That was an old thing. It's out. Plus, you need 27 sub sandwiches to get a free Pepsi. And you're uh, like, this is bullshit. I'll just pay for my own Pepsi. Right. And some of them just knock it out. My Starbucks, Broadway and 31st Street, Starbucks in Astoria is the best business i've ever been to i walk in they all, you gotta come over there and see it i think i've seen this one they go hey jojo they go hey joseph oh yeah you came over there yeah, hey yeah. joseph hey joseph they're all the thing's already ready made for me they just hand it to me i, I kiss it. them on the lips and i love all of them I, I know the whole cast and crew the over there one guy called me a queef i was like look at this guy it's unbelievable and uh, so it's hard i'm trying to support but but we're all full of shit because everybody goes Bezos and Amazon, they have horrible work conditions for their douches, and I'm not using them. Then 16 packages show up, and they go, "Woo! I got my toilet paper and my lint roller and my onions." It's hard. I, I won't. I, I don't buy books on Amazon. I try to go to a bookstore. I know I, I try to rev- not go to Barnes and Noble yeah. and go to the indie bookstores because I like the indie bookstore. I miss the indie DVD store. But Amazon, I got mouse, which we'll get into in a few oh, minutes. Oh, boy. The tra- it's like same traps as last time. You hit reorder. Boop. They're going to yep. be right there. And that way I don't have to walk to the store. And then, you know, you got to whisper. I got a little mice here. You got some mice yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah. Amazon Good doesn't point. judge. Good point. Condoms, tampons, Nuva Ring. I mean, the, the shit comes faster than my girlfriend. It gets there in like 20, 20 seconds. And, uh, you know, look, everybody's, everybody's a cum guzzler. Huh? Oh, the, blah, blah, blah. like you're using an iPhone. You got Air Jordans. That's Nike. Kaepernick's on his knees. I don't know what's going on. It's hard, and you, and you want to be the difference you see right. in your, the mirror or the man in the mirror, whatever the fuck it is. But then you're also sometimes like, am I going to make a big difference if I go to Chipotle right now? Am I really <laughs> saving somebody's business? Whatever. So well, That's what everyone thinks, and then it all adds up. I know. I get it. Gay. And when I go to Denver, I go to Slippery Pete's or whatever oh, instead of Chipotle. Uh, Sneaky Pete. Sneaky butt plug, whatever it is. I'm with you there. Uh, yeah. So you, you try to give a little back, but let's be honest, not many people are doing it. It's very difficult, but... I do like it. I like a record store. It's, I, I'm not buying records at Urban Outfitters. I'll tell you that right now. Well, that's a sad state of affairs, whoever's doing that that shit. But uh, anyway, I got a bunch more, but I, oh. I want to hear from you. Where have you been? You've been to Orlando? Oh. What the fuck? 
Uh, well, I, 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 I sometimes I feel like I talk about flights and travel too much, so I'm trying to mix it up here. Ah, mix it up a little. Trying to keep the people happy. Everybody's got a bone to pick. So you're not uh, talking? Is that uh, what you're saying? Uh, I'm not talking about travel as much. Oh, all right. I but, thought you were going to just take the vow of silence, and people are not going to be happy about that. No, no, no silence. Silence is violence, but... Um, is it, though? I don't think so. Please uh, But anyway, talk. let's get back to the thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, nobody's like, Harpo Marx, that piece of <laughs> oh. shit's a killer. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, He is a killer. I had a I had a chat with the lady here, and uh, we were like, you know, you got eighteen shows. She's dabbling in a little stand up, and she's got nineteen podcasts and running a show here and there. I'm doing seventy eight shows on the road every weekend, potting. I go, I haven't seen you in sixty eight days, and uh, I don't want to make it sixty nine. Nobody enjoys that. Let's be honest. So, I love sixty nine. Oh, oh I, I, what are you, you crazy? You can't get a butthole close enough to my face. Well, you could just shove a, a a rectum in the face there. You don't need her to be flipped over like that. So you're saying I should just go rectum in the face, not have myself getting blown uh, with the asshole in my face? I mean, got, you got a point, but I don't want any ladies schnoz next to my balloon knot either. Well, it's on top. The ball bag covers it. That's what's uh, so, so great about the ball bag, especially point. a lanky ball, as we have. Yes, it's I'm like all a, lanky. It's like a lid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a melted candle down here. But, uh, okay. Yeah, it's kind of like an like a unblown up balloon over the balloon knot. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so either way, haven't seen her in a year. I get a, I do a show. I'm, I'm done by like 8.40. I say, hey, fat lady, what are you doing? She goes, hey, I'm sitting at home. I go, put your ball gown on. We're hitting the town there, dickless. Oh, I love a town hit. And it was all spontaneous. She goes, ah! She runs downstairs, we grab a couple of beers, and we walk around, and, you know, it's still covid or whatever, so not much is fun and open, but we find this one bar. You know when you're walking around the village, you go, maybe we'll go here. You look at the menu. How hungry are you? I could eat a snack. You want a drink? Okay. That's no good. That place is closing. That place is weird. So we find the perfect place called Analog. Hmm. Just a nice kind of a cocktail bar. Okay. You know, they got the guy with the bow tie and the suspenders. Oh, yeah. And uh, we go in, and I go, oh, look, I know it's. I know we're pushing it here on time. By the way, New York City never sleeps. That shit's over. Those days have come and gone. Oh, it sleeps, baby. Oh, yeah. It's got narcolep. So, uh, narcolepsy. So, I, I go, hey, I, I know it's late. And he goes, Mark Norman? I go, yeah. He goes, I'm a Tuesday. I'm a Whoa! big fan. Holy hell. I go, right on, fatty. He gets me the best seat in the house. The, the, the waiter comes over. He's like, we're all gays. Here's a couple shots. They give her a couple glasses of wine. We get a charcuterie, whatever the hell. And uh, it was just a great night. Came that home great. and plowed the lady. Woo, little dialogue and analog. Oh, mm. anal. We put the anal analog, and uh, the guy's like, I got a back room here. They used to be a speakeasy where they did jazz shows. You want to do a show here? I'm like, yeah, yeah, sounds good. Keep it moving, Queef. And uh, yeah, so it was fun. Great night in the village. Walked home. Made sweet, sweet love and dozed off. I love a restaurant origin story where they're like, this used to be the mob hang. So do Lucky I. Luciano ate a bowl of pasta over here. Right. And, you know, you know, Harpo Marx, uh, you know, whatever. Ate. Fucked a kid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> whatever. That's why the comedy store is fun. They're like, this was Ciro's. They I know. They ate out of a baby over here and they did blow off a Lincoln's hat. And you're like, Jesus Christ, a lot of history. I know. There's ghosts and suicide in there. That place is great. Oh, yeah. Great. It's so many twists and turns in that place it's like a little little keebler elf tree it just keeps moving i gotta get out to la i miss la i miss i'm so fucking grateful to be back running around doing the thing i was in des moines no mask laws or rules i just i didn't even leave with a mask i'm just out and about it's fantastic and i really think people are vaccinated or they don't give a shit so there's nobody left to mask i don't get it and the vaccinated people are the most angry about no mask. I'm like, you're fine. The, the guy without the mask, if he's not vaccinated, that's on him. What are you worried about? But I don't even see anybody getting mad about the mask anymore. I haven't seen anyone or heard anybody mad about someone not wearing a mask. I get it at a restaurant. You walk in and you're like, oh, oh. So they're like, man, you got to put the mask on. Then you go sit down six feet away and now your mask is off and you're sneezing and queefing all over the table and they're fine with that. But if you stand up, you got to put it back. It's all very, it's all optics, Jerry. Well, that part's silly, but I, for a long time, people were mad if you didn't wear your mask. It's like, hey, but now it just feels like, oh, yeah, you got to put it on because right. of the thing. Right. So it feels like, it feels over to me. I mean, it, this is so exciting. I just did Bobby's pod in the studio 
and whatever. I mean, they did Des Moines all weekend. Great shows. Thanks to all the Tuesdays that came out. So nice. The people are unbelievably nice. Got some gift cards, a beautiful, yes. couple beautiful letters. One guy gave me cash. Some guy named Adam, he gave me a $10 bill. He said, please mention my name on the podcast. And then his girlfriend was like, yeah, she was, he was going to sell me to you. Oh, wow. Which I, uh, I was interested in. I was sure. going to say, hey, I got 10 fresh bucks here if you want to have a roll in the uh, tits. In the gay, yeah, why not? Please. But, but thanks, Adam, and thanks to everybody. I mean, it was just so nice. Great shows and felt so good to be on the goddamn road. And then I felt like a killer. These shows were killer, killer shows. Steve Rogers came, did a great job warming them up, and uh, I, I, I got an act right now. Yes. I'm very excited about it. I'm in Kansas City next weekend. Come Whee! out, get some tickets because... I got some. It's all dick and shit, but boy, it it rips. Hey, what's more relatable than that? Now, what do you what do you think of this? I I think you're gonna. I don't want you to judge, but you might judge. I'm not sure how you're gonna feel about this. Here comes the judge. Lay it on me, sloppy jalopy. I'm a little take. unsure of the reaction here, because you know me. I like to get crazy and compulsive and just spend some cake. Oh, you didn't buy another Eisenhower uh, <laughs> catalog or something? <laughs> you got some fucking. John Wilkes Booth's uh, program. What do you got here? Well, this one's a little different. I think you're gonna like this a little better. Uh, all right. It's not a thing, but so I'm oh, sitting in the room with crypto. You know, you know how when you're in the room after the show, I'm just sitting there. I mean, I'm pulling my putt. I'm thumbing my ass. Sure. I'm flipping through channels all at the same time. Yep, yep. yep. And then you just look at your phone because you're like, I, I guess I'll look at my phone. So I started looking at my Delta situation, mm. and it's like you've reached silver. Ooh, I hope. Well, I'm platinum this year, but you have to redo it every year. I know. They and get you. I have this thing. I don't know if it's ego or just life in general, but I'm like, I can't go backwards. Yeah, I, I'm with you, Fatty. I, I won't it. go back. You know, we will not go back. Isn't that one of the chants? I can't remember. Uh, 9-11, never forget. Who can keep up? I don't know what's what, but I, I'm like, I can't go back. And I'm like, silver? I'm platinum. Right. I can't go to silver, but it's like you have till the end of the year. And I go, well, shit, I got to buy some flights because I'm doing the road less. You know what I mean? I'm like, I got less road gigs because I'm trying to be home a little bit more because it's too much every week. I want to kill myself flying every week. This is how they get you. This is literally why they do this platinum I shit because they want you to go, I can't go back. I got I to gotta stay platinum like Dr. Dre. I know. It's all status. You know, he smashed a woman's head through a wall. I know. It's very strange. It never comes up. Completely fine. Yeah. Then some guy got fired for uh, writing a book and he called a woman stupid right. and fired him. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Dre. Sam Harris. Smashed you hear the head too? right through a wall. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. I know. He's on the board of Apple or something. Whole list of people that have done horrendous shit that are completely fine. I mean, I don't want them to get in trouble because I don't like any of that. But if we're going to do it to one guy, why not do it to the other guilty guy? Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Any tits. So I'm sitting there. I go, I got to book some flights. So I'm looking at my calendar and I thought, you know, I've always wanted to go to Berlin for uh, Christmas. <laughs> Christmas time. Oh boy. Well, Christmas time. I did not they see have, that coming. They have the markets down there. You the know? markets. They got Christmas Ooh-wee. markets. That's their whole thing. They have a Ferris wheel and the lights. Google image some Christmas markets sometime. It's what pretty the fun. A Christmas market. Well, it's a market for Christmas. The Holocaust wasn't enough. They got to shove Christmas down these Jews' throat too. Good well, Lord. Germany is the capital of Christmas. It's Chris Kringle. I think he's German or is he ah, Dutch? Yeah, Santa Claus. Is that right? I believe he is a big uh, big germ. But wait, what about Norway? Isn't Norway something? I think Norway's Oh, maybe Chris that Kringle. is. That's where reindeer come from. That's right. I ate one one time. Yes. She I was think, pissed. I think he got something with the Norway. <laughs> I think Norway has something to do with Santa Claus. Yeah. But huh. Klaus sounds German. German. Yeah, but the, the Norwegians aren't a, a jolly bunch, and Santa's all jolly. That's his whole thing. He's fat. He's got red cheeks. He's fucking the, the elves. That's true. We'll get to the bottom of this later, but I think Germany, they love Christmas, but they have these big markets all over, and it's like a... It's like a flea market, but for Christmas. They got, okay. I think, like little things and trees. I don't know what the fuck it is, but they had a terrorist attack there, and I said, this, that seems like a fun place to go. They did in Berlin? I don't know if it was Berlin. It was one of the German Christmas markets. I know they had a wall. They got the wall there, and they got these crazy dance clubs that like start at midnight and they go till noon the next day, which mm. I won't go to, but it's something to say to my wife, pretend we're going to go. I think they got Oktoberfest as well. Right, that got also... canceled last year because of pandemic or whatever. Right, but could you get a soda over there? Could you get a soda with a big mug? 
I guess so. <laughs> Mug Costanza. <laughs> yeah, right? Because you don't you want to fit in. You want to stand out, but you got your you got your big chalice there and your later hosen. Well, whatever it is, I said, you know what? I always every year you know you have these things every year you're like, we should go to Germany for yes. Christmas time. Yes. So I said, what the fuck? And then I go into Delta, I forgot I had seven thousand dollars of the flights from twenty nineteen or twenty twenty, including go away. including us. Sorry, somebody's queefing it up out there, and it sounds like was, my hog. Yeah, I think someone stole your uh, wife. But <laughs> so it, I had a two thousand dollar flight. I bought two tickets to Melbourne because Sarah was coming with me. Never use them, so I see them. The credits they're just hidden in here. So I go, I got credits. So I pulled up a couple flights to Berlin, and I said, "Give me two tickets. Got them for three hundred bucks using the voucher." Yes, the vouch cost me six fifty to fly one person round trip to Des Moines, three fifty to fly to Berlin. Woo! So I'm going to Berlin. I text oh, Sarah and I go, man. "Hey, guess what? There, uh, salty tits. You're going to Germany." I love it. I think this is great. I, what do you think? What do you mean judging? This is killer. I love this. This is lunch. Well, You're going to Germany, fatty. I bought a couple books. I buy a car. Wow. I, buy, I spend money like a fucking drunken hooker. But uh, but this is a, a life experience. This is an this is a thing. A book. A book is a book for a crook in a nook. This is a real trip. That's a good point. So I'm um, going to Berlin around Christmas time. Can't wait. I looked up some markets. I got and then the hotels. It hasn't like opened there yet because of the vaccine, whatever the fuck. So I found this hotel. It's like a four and a half star hotel, eighty bucks a night. Wow! I got us like a pimp ass spa hotel. The whole works, and uh, I can't wait. I'm going to Germany. Uh, Most of us from Heist and David Hasselhoff. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I'm with you. Well, wait a minute. I mean, is does your lady ever get down on her knees and blow you like, why? What? what the fuck? I got the most spontaneous, fun loving. Kooky, uh, living life on the fast lane, queef on the biz. Well, I think she's excited. I think it's nice. But, I mean, I, sometimes I do say, I'm like, I think you have the number one best husband of all time. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a loyal as a, as a puppy dog out here. I only jerk off thinking about other people. I'm not fucking them. You know what sure. I mean? And, uh, but Appreciate I mean, I, that. I do a lot of jerking off. Yeah, you're there. And, uh, you know, the uh, Kramer, the butler. Uh-huh. I, I'm a nice guy. You know, I don't do drugs. I don't drink. I bring home the bacon. I fry it in the pan. I mean, Ye- sure, I don't cook or eat her cooking and uh, or, or her pussy, but eh, you, get, you take some, you lose some. But we're going to Berlin, and uh, you know I'm taking the Sox game, and uh, what are you going to do? Concerts out the ass. You guys go to the beach. You go to Maine. You go to Bean Town. You're you, you use her on the road. I mean, what a guy. We're jet setters, baby. Yeah, good person. So I'm excited. I'll see you in Berlin, and there's some Berlin gays. Maybe she send me the place with his uh, thing, or maybe we'll we'll kiss or whatever. Oh, this is but uh, is the world definitely going to open up? How do we know what the uh, scheduling is on? the uh, cove well i'm a little nervous because i didn't look that up until after but they're starting to roll out their vaccines there they're opening up a little bit and didn't the vaccine come from germany wasn't it german scientists or doctors or something that's close yeah they're all honkies over there i don't know i can't keep up we just started vaccinating three months ago and we're kicking ass out here so but they have six months to open up it's got to be open sure Okay, I think you got time. I think you'll be all right. And, and they're gonna throw a lot of. Uh, was it cheap? I assume because they. The flight, who's buying a ticket for a year in advance? The flight wasn't cheap, but the hotel is crazy cheap. Okay, and I don't know. We'll see. And oh, and, and the markets are outside too, so I think they're on. That's another thing, by the way, with the masks. I'm watching the French Open. They're all wearing masks outside. I'm like, I know. We're a hundred percent. I know. Shown. I mean, I understand early on they didn't know what was sure, what. We sure. thought it was the plague, but now it's like. I don't get it. You're outside. Like, there's less than 1% transmission outside. I think it's a, hey, this is the way the wind's blowing. We don't want to be judged. We don't want to stand out. I think that's what it is. We're just scared of getting yelled at. You don't want to be the one guy not wearing one. Then they take a photo and go, what a look at this inconsiderate kook. But you're like, we're out outdoors. I mean, we should uh, yeah, use yeah. The, the, the science we have. Follow the science. We follow the science on certain stuff, but then we go, fat people are healthy. You're like, well, what are we doing here? We got the doctor. Right. It's all very strange. Yeah, well, I mean, you just think you update as you go. I mean, that's how it should be. Early on, you don't know, so you go, this is what we got to do, and then you go, oh, wait, it turns out we don't need to do that. We should do this. And then by the end, you should go, well, you definitely don't need it outside. It's hot out. Of course, of course, and it's open air, and uh, the whole thing's made up anyway, obviously. But good for you. I want to say one thing about a flight, and then I'll leave it alone. But right. uh, I had a moment with a child okay. on a flight, and I think it, it was big. It was, uh, it was touching, not in a Epstein way or, or a Subway Jared Fogle way, but like uh, 
I'm on this flight to Orlando. I went to Orlando all weekend at the Improv, and uh, great club, good time. Uh, had a had a fun with this gal. Heather Shaw opened, killed it. Funny as hell. Shaw Smith was great. Doug Key popped in. He just happened to be in town. Weirdly enough, he did guess that. It's just a hot weekend. Two Shaws. Yeah, strange. Eh? Wow. Heather Shaw, Shaw Smith. Hmm. No relation. But uh, Shawshank Redemption. But either way, I'm flying to, to Orlando. I got there early to do the uh, lounge again. I'm obsessed with the lounge. I'm hooked on the lounge. Oh, the airport lounge. Yeah. I sorry. thought that was a club in Orlando. Oh, no, no, no. I, I the, the lady was like, what time is your flight? I'm like, ah, it's at 2. And she's like, well, where are you going? It's 10. I'm like, I'm getting to that lounge. I want all the lounge time I can get. So I, I go to the airport. We get on the plane. Normal flight. This row next to me across the aisle is a I don't know, a cute little six-year-old kid with his mom. And uh, we hit some wild, wacky, kooky turbulence. I'm oh, talking boy. like, woo. You know, it was like yeah, where the, 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 whole audience, the whole crowd goes, ah, you mm-hmm. know. The big drop, yeah. And then you could see the wing wiggling. That wing is wiggly out there. Well, don't always remember a wing. It's built. They can almost touch. They can bend so far. Yes. It helps. I guess so, but it's it's not a good look. There. It's, it's bad look, but that helps mentally with people because you, you you think it's going to break off, but it doesn't break. It bends all the way up. It bends, baby. It's like a boner, though. You're like, I don't want that to bend too much. It might snap. Mercedes. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, maxi pad with wings. But I look over, and this kid is petrified. He's beyond screaming. He's like, you oh, know. Jesus. And the is mom, he alone? Oh, the, mom. the fat mom is holding him, and she's got the tits on either side of his head. But, uh, I mean, he's just like, this is it. You could tell he thinks we're going to die. Tits by Dre. Yeah. yeah. So this kid, and I was, I was beating it, but uh, this kid is freaking out, and I didn't know what to do. And I was scared, too. The whole, the whole plane is scared. The, the stewardess, flight attendant, air Gee waitress. Whiz. That's like the N-word. You can't say oh, stewardess. Sorry, sorry. We'll bleep it out, Shelby. All right. The, uh, Jesus Christ. The, the plane whore is walking down, and the, the captain's going like, all right, everybody, buckle up. This is going to be crazy. You know, it's, I was like, this guy's too loosey-goosey. The waitress happened to be walking down, and she got on her knees and did like one of these, like holding the seats. Oh she was God. terrified. Now, when you see them scared, you go, oh, boy, this is real deal what? here. She's holding the seat? She's holding the arm uh, the armrest on either side. Like, Oh, my God. I, I think it's a move they teach you in Delta <laughs> Camp or whatever. So, Delta Burke. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, I'm like, oh, boy, this is scary. This is scary. You look out the window. It's just white, you know, sheet white because you're in the clouds somewhere. Okay, okay, okay. And, uh, yeah, and I look over, and this little kid, the cute little black kid, he's got his device, you know, his little Game Boy or whatever, and he throws that to the side. He's trembling. He's shaking like a leaf. And I go to, I, I look at the kid, and I go, Oh, you gave him a thumbs up. I'll be like, it's going to be okay. He's got no dad. The dad walked out clearly. So I stepped in. <laughs> nice so step in. I stepped in, and I go, and he goes, like, you think? You, you think oh. we'll be all right? And I went, it's going to be good. I gave him the eye. We got the mask on, so I couldn't, you know, lick my lips or anything. You're looking like a pilot with the mask on. Uh-huh. You're like Maverick. Yes, so I go, Focus. and he goes, uh, uh, and I go, oh, yeah. And then we evened out. It all came back. The, the stewardess lady got up and walked past and high-fived everybody, and the kid went, oh, oh it was a nice. sweet moment. Oh, sweet a sweet moment. moment. Ray Ray and Big Steve. <laughs> We all chilling and shit. Yeah, yeah, good times. So, uh, yeah, you're welcome there, Dickless. That away, Sonny boy. Oh, you be yeah. careful. You stay in school. All right. Yes. Tuesday's <laughs> stories is brought to you by Remember Kramer on the. Yeah, don't do Ooh. drugs. You kids stay in school. Oh, uh, too good. Great, great guy. Did you know uh, Matt Wayne gave me a fun fact about that scene when uh, Kramer's on Regis and Kathy Lee? Yeah. That I guess um, this guy's boncos. Boncos. You know that story? No. Well, Regis Philbin evidently didn't want to say boncos. He was like, nobody says boncos. What is this? Uh huh. And he's like, I'm not gonna say. That. I will change it to bonkers. Uh-huh. And then Larry had to be like, you're saying boncos. Oh wow. The line is boncos. You're saying boncos. And he's like, all right, I'll say boncos. Boncos. It feels like a Regis thing. It, it does. I thought he riffed that. No, he's like, I'd never say this. No one ever says this. This isn't a word. But I think it was like, you know, Peter Melman and Larry David were like, you got to say boncos. It, You're saying boncos. It's funnier. I, I I remember not getting like, why is he saying boncos? But it works because I thought it felt Regis-y. I'm telling you, this guy is boncos. He nailed it. Regis is a talent. You guys should really watch Seinfeld if you haven't. We'll do another watch along soon. Oh, since yeah. Since we're the uh, last one standing here. Ah. Uh-huh. 
Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by ExpressVPN. <laughs> Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like talking on speakerphone in the middle of a crowded restaurant. No, everyone knows your business. You got that right. What? Don't, don't be that. that person when it comes to your internet. Get ExpressVPN. Why do you need a VPN? Without one, your ISP can be seen on every site you visit or every site you see. They turn around and they sell that info to ad companies. ExpressVPN creates a secure line between you and the internet. It runs in the background and just one click, your whole Wi-Fi network is covered. Tell, tell them a little bit about the thing. I love it. I'm on all kinds of black market and weirdo sites. So you got to get this VPN, get a little security, get a little privacy out there. The internet's a scary, kooky place. Let them have your back. You got to do it, folks. And it's rated number one by CNET, Wired, and The Verge. Secure your online activity now. Visit expressvpn.com slash Tuesdays, and you can get an extra three months for free. That's pretty good. That's expressvpn.com slash Tuesdays. Get on it today. All right. Uh, Raycon. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Raycon. I mean, this summer, this is a big summer. We're going to be all traveling around. I am going to Nantucket, Maine, Kansas City. Wow. I mean, it's going to be nuts. I'm what? thinking about booking a trip to Miami just for a couple of days to get more mileage. Hey. I got to the platinum status. It's white boy summer. But uh, July is a crazy month. I'm going to be traveling all over. I, I like to listen to podcasts. I like to listen to meditations. I like to listen to comedy, music, a lot of great new albums out there Ooh. that I'm really digging into. I, I just love rock and roll in the summer. So I need a pair of, uh, you know, air, air buds. And yep. I'll tell you what I reach for. I reach for Raycon. Mm -hmm. We're all getting out there this summer. Whether you're listening to rock and roll or a podcast, a pair of Raycons makes all the difference. Raycon wireless earbuds give you crisp, powerful beats at half. That's right, half the wow. price of other premium audio brands. I love these Raycons. They make that cool sound. How does it go? Raycon. I mean, how fun is that? They look great. They come in a range of colors. They're comfortable, customizable. You can get gel tips included for a snug fit. How nice is a snug fit? Love a snug fit. Like to be snug. They're snug easy Harvard. to pack. Raycons come with a compact charging case. They won't let you down, I promise. Bluetooth pairing is seamless, and boy, can these puppies hold a charge with a 24-hour battery life. Wow. These last wow. the entire day. I know you have them. I know you love them. Tell the folks at home how to get these sons of guns. I love them. The sound is crystal clear. It comes in booming. Big bass boost. Love it. Listen up, folks. Raycon's offering 15% off all their products for our listeners. Just go to buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. That's it. You'll get 15% off your entire order. Holy hell. That's 15% off at buy. Raycon.com, B-U-Y-R-A-Y-C-O-N.com slash Tuesdays. One more time, buy Raycon slash Tuesdays. All right, you got to go. I just did all that Germany shit. Oh, that's fascinating. When's the trip? December, I don't know, second week of December. All right, all right. Got to get those mileage, baby. Ooh-wee. Uh, yeah, so I uh, just went down to Orlando, Florida. Florida is such a fun place gig anywhere tampa miami orlando you name it eh, jacksonville's on the fence but it, it just sucks. it just feels great it's like going to wuhan you're like whoa it's another country down here they do what they want they live on the fly to the seat of their anal i mean it's fun to visit i don't know if i want to live there but just going down there you're like whoo throw that mask in the shitter don't, don't wear condoms and just say slurs yeah orlando uh, yeah, i feel like we got a little bit of difference on orlando i suppose but wow. i feel you with tampa tampa yeah, i love yeah. Key west i love miami i like in some ways yeah, doses uh fort lauderdale i've been oh, that could yeah, be fun, that's fun. But yeah. Key west and tampa that's florida to me here here and i did a little bit of uh uh, what's the one where you uh, Gainesville? I did some Gainesville. Oh, that's fun. Gainesville. Tom Petty, the Gators. That's it. Against me, a band. Uh, but uh, Orlando, you know, I don't want to hurt any feelings or ruffle any feathers. But Orlando, if you wouldn't mind taking that trip to Tampa, because sure, <laughs> yeah, Orlando, I, I, I'm nervous there. I mean, I always got beat up at Shaw's gig last time I was oh, there. Oh, right, right, that right. That guy right. wanted to fight me, and then out in the streets, it was a little bit of. Uh, it felt like. 
you know, Austin, if you know what I'm saying. Well, there's a couple of uh, kooks down there because it's it's the whole town is based on entertainment, like uh, Universal, Disney World, the other one. They're all just, it's these weird carny folk, it feels like. Anybody who lives there, it's just... That they seem a little wilder in Orlando. Yeah, it's a lot of uh, they're they're like hawking stuff. It's like a, yes. uh, like barkers. It's yes. a lot of like this roller coaster. This they have like freestanding rides yes. where you like do like it's like jumping out of a plane. It's just randomly on the side right, of the road. You can right. buy a ticket to a thing. Completely. So I like a little of that because I'm from New Orleans. It's got that kind of nasty degenerate vibe there. You go downtown, the fucking streets are packed. Every bar is full. People are fist fighting, doing heroin. The blow, my God, the blow. Uh, so the shows were good. We filled them up, a lot of them, but uh, I sold every shirt, which is great. Thanks, gays. But drunks at every show. It was one of those nights where, like, the, the feature, Shaw would get off stage and go, they're great. This is a hot one. You go up, and you're doing 50, 55. By about 38, they're gone. They uh, are just in the bag, yelling, screaming, fall. You know, you hear a lot of ksh- Shuts up. One guy drops a glass. Uh, you know, the waiter gets his ass pinched. It was wild, but you got yeah, it was a slugfest towards the end. But you you pull through and they're all in good spirits. Literally. But it's not the mean heckle. It's like woo right. you go girl kind of shit. That and chaperone type of thing. Yes. Your your baby's sitting twenty minutes left. Yeah, that's tough. I've done that room a few times, and it, it feels like it's kind of a rowdy area because it's all the things that you love about yes, Florida yes. make it tougher for comedy. Right. Because everybody's out jet skiing and, and screaming obscenities all day. Right. By the time they come around to comedy, they're like, woo! They're showing their crispy tits. Yes, exactly. Great donut. But I was like, all right, Sunday will be, it'll be reserved. You know, Sunday is kind of nice night, God's day. We'll take it easy. And it's so weird when you do those rowdy rooms all weekend or those rowdy shows. When they're paying attention, you're like, "This is amazing. This is magical." But that's what a show's supposed to be, right? Isn't that weird? You get a, you get a conditioned. Yeah, well, uh, again, I, I hate to shit on Orlando because there's things I like about Orlando. I'll think of some. They know. Someday. They know it's uh, every guy was like, "Thanks for coming. Sorry about the crowd." But the thing with Orlando, nobody ever in the history of comedy or Orlando has been like, you got to do Orlando. That's the room. That's, <laughs> That's the true. city. That's the town. Yep. You got to hit Orlando. Except maybe. Did someone do a special there? I don't think so. Don't maybe think like so. America's Funniest Home Videos is there. That's what they do. They do. Uh, what's that one with the Asians falling into the water? Uh, big, Pearl Harbor? No, no. It's the one. The big book. <laughs> Uh, the Big Bang there. What's that one where it's like the Wipeout? Wipeout. Oh, Wipeout. Why, that wipe feels out. very Orlando-y. You know, just like, hey, we'll hit you with a big styrofoam mallet. And you go, ah! And the, your whole family goes, damn, we lost. Right, American Ultimate Gladiators. Yeah, yeah, all that shit. So, uh, yeah, Orlando's a kooky place, but uh, we had some fun shows. And then I just, you know, you're in Orlando, you get swept up in Florida. Something about that Florida makes you want to fuck a guy's wife and do ketamine and eat out a dog. But... Went out to like six in the morning on Saturday night, and it was like, "What am I doing?" You know, you wake up at two, you feel like ass, you're shitting blood. You're like, "What am I doing?" I'm 37 years old, and I used to do that every weekend. Yeah, yeah, every night. I mean, we went yeah. crazy, but yeah, that shit's no good. It's no fun, and uh, you get nothing it out of it. No, you feel like shit. It's horrible. It's you, like the worst. And then we went to a house party, and everybody's on drugs. Oh, and look, I'm eating over here. I know. Do what you want, and, and live your life. I'm not judging, but it just I'm I'm past that. And you have things to do on Sunday. I had a Zoom call and a, and a podcast and all this shit, and you're like. I got to get it together. <laughs> you know, you wake up, you got eight texts. You're like, I can't even look. And I Ar- can't look. The Ar- responsibilities. Orlando house party. I'd rather I go to the doctor, the chiropodist. Oh, man. There was a ferret running around. Somebody had a oh. nose ring. I mean, oh. the whole thing's bananas. God. But uh, I, I, it's in me, Jerry. I, I, it's, it's part of who I grew up as. And uh, it's hard to shake. It's like a you know, fat guy just like, fuck the diet. I'm eating the cheesecake. I get it. But an Orlando house party. I mean, that, that's where we're different. I would just go back to the room and drink seven. Five cocktails uh, and beat off in the Bible. Wow, <laughs> those pages they get they get sticky, but it's just tough because you're out with the gang. You know, you got the openers and the and the guest spot. You're all drinking, and then you don't want to go alone. So you just where are you guys going? Oh, we're going to the Dickhead's apartment over here in the you know Pecan Valley or one of these apartment complexes, and 
Yeah, yeah, they're watching ICP, and we're all drinking <laughs> oh. uh, some wacky punch. You know, and it's brutal. You got to be at the ICU. I mean, uh, George Papard. I, I, I don't know what. That, that just sounds awful to me, but, you know, you have some fun. You get some memories. I mean, yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not even getting a story out of no, it. No, no story. I sat on the couch and chugged vodka and, and maybe oh. made a, a, a gay joke every now and then just to show them I'm still there. And then, you know, MMA's on and uh, I got a dog eating my ass. The whole thing's, the whole thing's a, a blur. Is anyone wearing Mickey Mouse ears? I picture Mickey Mouse ears. No, no, no ears. No, right. no, ears are out. Because it feels like the Burger King. Remember, there was always the guy at the party with the Burger King crown. He's like, <laughs> ah, I was that guy a couple times. Oh, really? Yeah, I feel bad about it. Eh, what He's are you like, gonna do? You get it? We, like, I'm wearing the crown. It's ironic, and people are like, I get it. It sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody likes the king. The king is dead. But I'm back. I'm uh, here, and I'm queer. Yeah, well, it's good to have you back. By the way, speaking of queer. I showed up at the uh, airport, LaGuardia Airport, with Steve Big Dick Rogers. Huge line at the airport because we're back. At 5 a.m.? No, this is the difference. This is the ah, way out. The way and out. it's packed crazy line. And he goes, I'm clear. And again, I'm like, what? The opener's going to beat me through the line? you got to be shitting me. I love clear. And they go, the lady goes, hey, well, right now we're doing a special offer. If you bring your buddy 50 bucks, he gets clear for the year. What? And I said, well, I'm queer, and I'll take clear for the year. Yeah, clear. You're going clear like a Scientologist. Yeah, so I grabbed my gear and got queer clear for the year for 50 bucks here, here. with him. And I had to just put my fingerprints. But doesn't it freak you out? I don't want to be one of these guys that's oh, like they, they're giving you the fucking vaccine so they can look at your tits at night. But they literally said, which one of these cities isn't meaningful to you. What? And it was Rockford, Illinois, which was the answer. Yeah. Burlington, Massachusetts, where I worked at Sears 25 years ago. Everett, Mass, where I fucked my dad like 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah, we've had many nights at Everett, Mass. And then it was a story in New York where I currently live. And I'm what? like, where's this question from? What is this? What are they? They following you? They got uh, tabs on you? You spit in a test tube? They get your blood sample? It's strange. They scanned my eyeballs and then they knew I worked at the Burlington Mall. Wow. And then they said, when is Sarah Talamash's birthday and I'm like all right I type in Sarah Talamash's birthday bloop, you're clear and I'm what? like this is oh. fucking freaky and I'm not one of these guys that eats mushrooms and you know doesn't <laughs> use a payphone or whatever sure sure yeah you're on the grid there Chachi I mean, that's it it's a wrap I mean it's a griddle I, I, <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but I, I, I fucking wipe dog shit all over my windows so they can't yeah. listen to my calls. I'm you, scared to death. You're going to be wearing a tinfoil hat soon and uh, bugging your phone because this is, this is it. You're in. You're I'm, in the system. I'm Randy Quaid, so I am the fucking shore patrol. I, I'm terrified, <laughs> but so we'll see. But I got clear now, and that's exciting. But let me ask you this about the plane. I, I don't want to be a, a, a cunt. And I guess we talk about travel too much, but we travel. Ah, bring it on. But so I'm on the flight. I'm excited. The French Open, you know me, I'm a big tennis douche. And I, I miss it already because the tournament was going on for two weeks. So every day I was waking up at 7 a.m. I got Tennis Channel. I'm watching the tennis and it's it got into my routine. Yes. Because I wake up and I'm like, I'll watch a, a little bit of tennis. Love that Djokovic. So Djokovic's playing uh, Sissa Pass on Sunday. It's the French Open final. It comes on at 8 a.m. Central. The flight is at. 7.30. Okay. It's a two-hour flight, so I'm like, they got Delta. I'm in first class, and they stream. They got the Dish TV Dish. Yeah, direct. Direct TV, Dish, whatever. So I go, great, and I got my alarm all set. And you know, when you set an alarm, you don't need an alarm. Isn't that ironic? Every time, the, the mental clock kicks in. Exactly. So it's uh, 7.59, clicks over to 8 a.m. I go, here we go. I turn uh -oh. off my porn, uh -oh. <laughs> put it on. And they go, oh, well, this is Djokovic. The, the whole setup, McEnroe's there, the whole thing. And the first serve of the match, couple bounces, about to serve, PA announcement. Ah. And this is the announcement. Hey, folks, uh, we understand we're having some trouble with our entertainment system. No, we're not. It's I'm watching working. the match. Everybody, I can see. There's only two rows in front of me because I'm first class, son of a bitch. But everyone's got their movies. I'm like, no, fuck whoever's not working. Just tell them to blow me. Give them a voucher. Yeah, and you're, the PA announcement is the trouble with entertainment. I know. He's fucking me so hard. I just want to watch the match. I, I've, I've been watching the whole tournament. There's nothing worse than when you watch every minute of a fucking tournament and it's going gonna, it's gonna to come. It's the yeah. final thing. The cup in my ass. And then he goes, we got an entertainment problem, so we got to reset the Wi-Fi. Oh, that takes 30 minutes. And he goes, it's going to be about 10 minutes. And I wanted to go, Who is, who's the... 
who won't wear the ribbon? I'm like, whose entertainment system isn't working? I want to come and shove my dick down their mother's throat. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I've been waiting for this. This is all I have. But you got to remember, if this was you without the TV working, you'd be whistling Dixie. Of course. Dixie. I want the reset. I'd be go up there and reset it. I don't care if anyone's working. I'm the I most know. important guy. So I, I go. I get it. I calmed down. I did a little straw breathing. I pulled my penis again for the third time on this episode. Yep. I did a little breathing, calm myself down. I go, all right, it's 10 minutes. It's going to be a four-hour match. I'll miss the first 10 minutes. No big whoop. It resets. Bloop. They're all back on. Ah. I click on the menu. Live by dish. Click it. Just blank. Ah. No channels. Ah. You, the guy blew it with the reset. So I go, Fuck the reset. Fuck the retards. Fuck the reanimator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Silent I, re. I got to go, uh, pardon me, sir. And, and I'm in the window. So there's a uh, guy between us. I got to lean over, though, the bald guy. And this big, fat, sweaty monster comes up and goes, I help you, sir. And I'm first class. So I'm getting the first class treatment. He's like, hello, sir. He's bowing or whatever. The shit bow. And we're not big bing. Got bomb. No, We're no, I hate bomb. it. I hate to be. I don't want to be noticed. I just no want to notice. hide under the thing. So I go. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm trying to watch the tennis match here. And this guy's like right next. I'm gonna talk over a guy. He's. You can tell he's looking at me because he's watching Werewolf Three or whatever bullshit. <laughs> and I go. Can I, I'm like the the match. The the TV's not working out. It was working earlier. And the yeah. guy's like, ah, well, I don't know. Let uh, me go. Boy. Let me go check it out. He goes, I'll, I'll do some troubleshooting in a few minutes. So I go, all right, all right. Oh, I'm trying to be nice. Every serve and love and and, and paddle. And volley the whole That's thing. The one. So he goes up and I'm watching him. He fiddles with the thing. He's hitting all these buttons. He can tell he doesn't know what he's doing. He looks like he's defusing a bomb. Yep, yep. And then after about eight minutes of him fiddling. Zh- it comes on. Uh-huh. I got the match, and the match is back. But now you're 10 minutes with the reset, and another eight with the fiddle. So Exactly. So I'm missing half the match. It's like 3-3 three, three now, and I'm like, okay, it's back. But I couldn't yell to him, because here's the thing. He kept fiddling. Uh, he doesn't know what you're seeing. He's continuing to fiddle, and I'm like... <laughs> I'm like, I'm waiting. For, I wanted to yell, like, sir, but I'm in the third row. Can you go, ha ha? Or he's not looking at he's you. He's not looking. He's got I his back. See. He's got to be back to the. So he's fiddling with his back to me. And I'm going, and somehow I just know I got a sixth sense for this shit. I go, no, stop fiddling. I got yeah. the match. It's going. It's, it's coming. It's going. It's going. Finally, boop, boop, boop. Uh, shuts off. And now it doesn't even say live TV by dish. That The menu is gone. Oh, it's off no. the menu. Oh. And I'm like, fuck, you had it. We had it. Well, can he get, go beep, beep, beep and do whatever he did before? If I would, That's what I said. So he comes back a few minutes later, and I go, pardon me, sir. I'm so sorry. Uh, I want to kill myself. This is trust such a first-class problem, too. I'm like, trust I need me. Tennis. I want to kill myself. Believe me. I hate me more than yeah, you hate me. Yeah. The guy in the middle, I'm like, fuck you. By the way, the guy in the middle... But next to me, he was taking three Miller Lights, like a seven a.m. flight. I, I was love like, this guy. I was like, I got some, I got some literature right in my bag here that would really help you. <laughs> I think you want that guy. He's, he's easy breezy. Maybe, but he could also be crazy. He's drinking Miller. He's like crushing him on his head. He's gonna snap my head off. Like All a, right, this guy sounds like uh, my cup of jizz. So I go, pardon me, sir. I'm like. It was working. You turned it back on, but now it's gone again. Yeah, I'm yeah. trying to be friendly, but also a cunt. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I can't figure it out. But I'm like, well, you did have it on. I yes. Like, Could you backtrack? Yes. And he's like, backtrack? What? Uh, and I'm like, ah, never mind. Don't worry about it. So finally, he calls the lady from the bullshit people. Yeah. Uh, he brings yeah. her up. And she's, she seems smarter because she's thinner and better looking. Sure. And so... She, she comes up and then she starts troubleshooting boop, 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 and then boom it comes back on i'm like yes thank god for and the he, coos. he looks over i give him the thumbs up i'm like yeah dude thank you so now it, we're in like the fifth set by this point it's been like a you know it's only realistically it's been about a half hour all in and then finally i got it i go oh thank you i really appreciate that uh-huh settle in start watching Oh, God. Turbulence comes. It starts getting all blocky and choppy uh, and shitty. And then they go, folks, we're uh, experiencing some turbulence. So then it was just all shitty. It looked like... A bad porn. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Which is that I don't mind as much because it's like, it was working. You turned it off. Yeah, yeah. Fuck me. Finally came back on for a few minutes. Whatever. We land. I shot home. I, I caught the last oh, three wow. sets. How so long was this game? Doing? It four was hours? long. It was about four hours. Yeah, Holy it was a five hell. set thing. And then, so I got to see most of it still, but it was one of those things. When you're looking Ooh. forward to something, yeah. and I, the, the second fiddle was brutal. Brutal. Because I'm like, you had it. You did one too many buttons, and I knew he was going to do too many buttons. What a roller coaster. I mean, this is more intense than the actual game is not being able to get the game. 
That's big. It was brutal, but uh, all's well that ends well. And uh, Yeah, all right. Wow. Djokovic, by the way, the most perfect hairline on a human being, on a man I've ever seen. He's got perfect everything. He's perfect. unbelievable. He was down two sets to love twice in the tournament. That hasn't happened since 1946. We got Wimbledon coming what? up. It's all very exciting. And he won? He came back and won twice, once against this rookie asshole, Bertatino, some some guinea 21-year-old whippersnapper. Fucking wop. And then, uh, and then against Sisyphus, this anal Greek fellow. Yeah, Sisyphus. I don't like this kid. He's got syphilis. But Djokovic is a hero. The hairline, it's got the hair like a Lego. It's a perfect line. It's jet black. There's not a piece out of place. It's like a... A dome of hair. It's he's, unbelievable. He's a Lego head. But, he's uh, a Lego head. He's gorgeous. He's got a hell of a chin. He's ripped. He's thin. He doesn't have a piece of fat on that joke. Got a lot going on for him. It comes on. for I think, I think that's all I got here. Oh, uh, well, I... I uh, oh, shit, I had a question. Oh, this is going to be offensive. I don't want to ask that, but... Uh, ask? Oh, God. Well, to me. not offensive, but uh, maybe oh, uncomfortable. Geez. Oh, God. Well, first of all, I went to the airport. I forgot my mask. I just it was I was in Florida, so you don't even think about it. Mask is out, you know. It's a, it's a maskless state, and I get. Oh, by the way, I had an I had the. Uh, they're a little old school in Florida. They give you a car service like a guy just works for the improv and he drives people. That's his whole gig. Right. You wonder how do you make money? He looked like a, he was like a handsome Puerto Rican guy. He looks like Desi Arnaz. Got slick hair and glass aviator glasses on. Six five, whatever the hell. Sexy Latino X. Latinx? I think it's Kleenex now. Ah, uh, got it. Well, either way, he was a bit of a tissue. And uh, get in the car, immediately starts trashing all the comics. Ah, uh, that's fun. Which is fun for me, but then you're like, what's he going to say about my fat ass? Right. But I kept it, I tried to keep it uh, polite and nice, but... Oh, Panette this, and uh, Monique that, and uh, Pauly Shore this, and you're like, oh my God, I'm jerking it back. The, the, the dirt this guy was dishing was fantastic. Love dish dirt. Oh, man, you feel like a, like a, the most low-maintenance cum guzzler ever, because it's just like, man, I am a nice guy. I get, I get my ride, I tip, I get my own bag, I blow the guy. This, he was just saying the horror stories of these people. Wow. Yeah. So uh, he picked me up. He told me all about crypto. The guy talked the entire minute. If I if I tried to talk, he would cut me off. And I was like, ah, whatever, you talk. <laughs> and uh, Johnny, so I, you talk. I, <laughs> I get to the airport. That was good. Yeah. I get to the airport. I go, all right, thank you, sloppy jalopy. I walk into the airport. No mask. Oh, uh, boy. I didn't know what to do because I'm like, he's gone. The, every counter is jam-packed. There's a line out of my ass. So I go, okay, well, I can't go to the counter with no man because I'm just waiting in a line. So I take my wallet out, <laughs> and I just put it over my face like this. Let me see if I can pull it off here because uh, it's kind of masky. It's kind of the same size. Oh, that's not bad. I did this the whole time. You look like the gimp. Oh, You got yeah. a nice leather mask. Yeah, I got medieval on that airport, and... Uh, I finally get up to the clear guy all the way, chit, 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 rat race, maze, not one bad look, not one, if anybody looked, they go, how come he got to know where we're wearing, I don't, don't want to wear a mask, you know, that's the only look I got, got up to the clear guy, I go, you got, a, you got a mask, he goes, oh yeah, sure, he didn't bring it up, nobody asked me anything, put on a shitty clear mask and got through. I'm telling you, nobody's mad about the no mask anymore, I think we're all over it. Ah, there's some queef out there in Brooklyn, Maybe who will give you shit, I guarantee you. A couple, well, certain areas, I guess, but for the most part, I think we're good I, to go. I hope you're right. Uh, I'm done with it. I'm done with the pandemic. I'm done with the vaccine talk, and I'm definitely done with the strains. We got a new strain out in Bolivia that'll that'll make your asshole bleed slime. Well, the new strain is Delta. They got they better not be platinum. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, then they're coming right over here on a first class ticket. Germany. That's the move. Yeah, I'm going to Germany, baby. I'm impressed. Berlin. No, nothing's more. I've always wanted to go to Berlin. It's it's artsy. It's the only part of Germany that's got a little soul. It's artsy. There's some not. It's artsy Nazi. I mean, there's some Nazi stuff. The markets, and uh, I'm excited. We're right on the the, the Spree River. Ooh, Beautiful hotel. Hey. I can't wait. So if you're a, a German gay, let me know the place. The can't miss. Yeah. 
I uh, I had a trip to Israel planned. It was a comedy trip, but I was going to bring the the queef and uh, pop over there. It's like a twenty hour flight. It's a whole thing. I'd be there for a week and a half, but that fell through with COVID. But uh, oh. now I don't even think I want to go to Israel with the old uh, bombing. It's a little bit spicy over there. I bombed there in an arena twice, and uh, ah, I heard it was tough. Best food I had in that whole European Come tour on. was Israel. Oh yeah, insane. what was what are we talking like Middle Eastern shit? Uh, hummus and well, grape leaves. Middle Eastern. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. It was fish and some other thing and the other thing, but we went to like the best restaurant in Jerusalem, and uh, I mean, I, I was walking on water afterwards. Did you hit that Tel Aviv? No, but we landed in Tel Aviv, and then the, everybody in Jerusalem was like, you didn't go to Tel Aviv? Why nah. you go to Tel-? And someone said, if you didn't go to Tel Aviv, you didn't go to Israel, uh, which I hate people go. that talk like that. I hate that whole I'm thing. I'm like, I went to Jerusalem. I mean, like... That's Israel. What are right. you talking about? But they're like, Tel Aviv is Miami, and it's it's New York. It's New York meets Miami. I've heard every version of yep, Miami, yep. New York. So maybe someday I'll go to Tel Aviv. But you, you get that shit at a restaurant. So if you don't get the swordfish, you haven't eaten here. I'm like, I, I don't I, want I, the swordfish. I want the baked potato. Uh, you get a baked potato anyway. You got to get the swordfish. I'm like, I don't want swordfish. I love that moment in Comedians of Cars with Letterman when he goes, don't you feel like if you're not drinking black coffee, you're not drinking coffee? And Jerry goes, No. I love that. It's so great. Great Jerry moment. Great for two reasons. One, he's just shutting this guy down. And two, no one said no to Letterman. You don't hear a lot of people going like, what? To Letterman. Right. He was the what guy. Well, NBC said no to him. <laughs> Hello, folks. <laughs> All right. Well, we got to wrap this son of a bitch up. You got that right. All right. Uh, where are you going to be there, Dickless? All right. Comedy Club of Kansas City, which I understand is the new cool room, Everybody's right? Everybody's raving. So I thought you did it. You haven't done it yet? I did the improv. I don't think it was open yet, but uh, people are hot and bothered over this room. Somebody just did it. They said it was great. I thought it was you. Maybe not. I guess not. Not maybe. Definitely not. But anyway, someone said it was great. June 24th to the 26th. Come on out there. Get some tickets, get them early, bring some friends, spread the word, join the Patreon. We got all kinds of hot oh. gay sets. It's the best fucking thing in comedy going right now. Chuck E. Cheese. A lot of bonus episodes. We've watched Curb Eps together. We've watched Seinfeld Eps together. It's really amazing. We got high end, high octane, high fruit me, whatever they yeah. are. Corn syrup. So get on the Patreon, join today, and. Uh, what else? I got Mindful Metal Jacket is back. Brought that back. Sam Marill's on an episode. Matt Wayne, Ooh-wee. some expert lady thing. And uh, <laughs> join, uh, join uh, subscribe to my YouTube. Joe and Ronan's on there. Mindful Metal Jacket. Did some sketch videos. I did a new video there with Hershon. So oh, nice. check out that uh, YouTube. Yes. And who knows? There might be a special coming at some point Ooh. on there. Ooh. Yeah, someday. All right, all right. I I, uh, I got a big announcement. You know about it, but I don't know if I'm allowed to say it. But we're dating. Yes, finally, we're official. But no, what are, you, what are you allowed to say? I don't know. Well, I just want to throw this little nugget out there. We're shooting something in New York. I can't say what, but it's gonna be a big deal, and I need every gay there. It's in all, early August, so. Please, if you got some some uh, some love for the for the Jews here, come out, plan, pencil this in early in the calendar. I need you there. I need you laughing because this is going on wax forever. So uh, we'd love to have you. That's all I can say. Big deal, big production, and don't come and sit and go. Yep. Oh, I remember him talking about that before. Yep, yep. Come yep. and watch Def Comedy Jam to train. Uh-huh. I want it, you know, hooting and hollering and laughing ooh, and, ooh, and ooh, get ooh, those ooh. laughs going because it's going to be recorded. Yes, we need you. So get those laughs on there, spread them around, and, and don't come if you're a queep who's tight and weird. Right. Give it up. Big, be big, be loud, be laughers. Thank you. Thank you. I need you moving around. I need you spitting taken and all that because uh this is this is one for the books don't come there and go i want to watch the whole thing you know some people watch the audience watch you mm-hmm. i get it we do it we don't laugh we're queefy but just come out and yuck it up and have a good time and uh uh speaking of sam i got uh, we might be drunk and then levity live this weekend Ooh. uh san antonio couple tickets left i, I haven't plugged levity live at all so uh that could be a horrible turnout but uh yeah all over the road it's a big market i hope so phoenix at cb live syracuse funny bone toledo funny bone houston improv philadelphia helium buffalo dayton skyline and appleton arlington improv uh, brea albany you name it folks west palm beach back to florida so come on out get on the patreon 
Tell us what you like. Leave a comment. Leave a like. Leave a review. Share the queef. Share the love. Share the jizz. Thank you. Praise Allah. Boom.